Um, so I, I really want to take this honor to, uh, to present the, uh, the last teacher for the evening. Um, I mean, she just, obviously, I, I, I kind of like her. Um, I did put the ring on her. Um, but she's just uh, gorgeous, uh, smart, um, and uh, she's always so encouraging to me. And I just, I, I don't have enough adjectives, so I just, I just let her go on. So this is my awesome wife, Alyssa. All right, can you hear me okay? Oh, if you don't know this, Justin and I love music. So we are freaking nerding out this whole weekend. We have so many talented musicians, so many different kinds of music. I'm just like, oh, I'm such a, such a geek. I don't know. I'm so excited about it. Um, so, and uh, for those of you that don't know this, most of you know this, but if you don't know this, the only direction that Jess and I felt the need to give to anyone for teachings is to do what God tells you to talk about. And uh, I think we can see very clearly that God is, God is running this weekend, you know, and uh, he's got this figured out, and uh, really it's nice to take the pressure off of me and Justin because I'm just like, cool, step back, you know. Um, I was trying to dress up a little bit and then I was like, you know what, I'm really uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, so if that's a stumbling block for you, we, we can pray about that. But uh, um, I, don't, I, need to, I need to be comfortable so I'm not distracted what I'm doing. Um, thank you, brother. You're, you're, a rock, you're a rock star, quite literally, in many, many ways. Um, so... We've talked a lot about our authority in Christ, obviously, it's the theme, um, which is understandable, it is our theme, but what if you're not really feeling that powerful and authoritative, even though you know that you have authority? How, you know, I'm sure at some point, maybe someone might have felt that way, right? Um, what's something that holds us back from being bold for God and walking out that authority? You know, there's things that hold us back, you know, we shouldn't let them, but it's the truth. Sometimes we have things that prevent us from speaking, you know. Um, shame is a common theme for tonight, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, the feeling of being ashamed makes it very difficult for you to be bold for God. So we're wiping that shit out tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm talking about. Um, so let's go ahead and start in Genesis 2. Hey, my love. Um, can, you, can you bring me some water? It can be the one you're drinking or whatever. That's fine. I don't need a lot. What's mine is yours. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Lauren. Lorian. Can I steal your cajon? Cajones. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a cajon, so we like to just joke about that. Kim Petty's like, every time we see him, it's the funniest thing. Justin's like, you know, and Ken's like, I, got, I have an idea for a bumper sticker. <laughs> yeah, it takes cajones to play the cajon. <laughs> Uh, I love my husband. He's a badass. All right, so Genesis 2, verse 25. I've got my, uh, my uh, versions downloaded, Dulcie, so I'm flipping in between on my phone. <laughs> um, so it's talking about Adam and Eve. And it says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Hmm, that's interesting. I bet there's a lot of other ways that God could describe them. But he chose to say they were naked and not ashamed. Couldn't he have said they're naked and happy? Naked and full of peace? Naked and love? I don't know. But <laughs> um, he said naked and unashamed. That's interesting, huh? In this verse, um, shame is 
the Hebrew word bosh or bosh, I don't know how to say it, but you get the idea, um, which literally means to be utterly dejected and dejected and to be ashamed in front of one another, um, you know, containing a sense of fear of exploitation or of evil. So this is before they ate of the tree, right? We all know this story. Um, before they ate of the tree, they had no fear of evil. That's how God created us to be. They had no fear of being ashamed. They were naked both times. Like, you know, it's not like anything changed except for they knew that they were naked, right? So God kind of shows me things, you know, he shows you things where you're at, like maybe your business, Joshua, you know, maybe God shows you in your customer interactions, um, with your music lessons, right? Wherever you're at or working in a bar with your boss, Maddie, wherever you are, um, I got dogs. <laughs> I'm a dog lover. Um, Justin and I do want to have children, but we are not ready to have kids right now. So I have two dogs, and I'm a dog mom, and he acts like he's not, but then he wrote long, long description of notes for, for the guy that's taking care of the believer that's watching our dog. I was like, we're running out of time. Just say how much food, and just say, that, and just say to put her in her crate. And he's like, okay, now, and we use, like, stupid things, like, okay, come on, girls, it's time to go pee-pee, go pee-pee, you know? And so he's, like, writing down these specific things. I have to, I'm sorry, I have to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but exactly, I mean, he was being, so, but it's so funny, it's so funny. I love you, you're going to be the best dad. Um, <laughs> So we have two dogs. We have Lainey, who is about two years old. She's a rescue dog, a believer. Ashley gave, it, gave her to us. Um, and Lainey was rescued by Ashley when she was about eight weeks old, right, eight weeks. And she was um, abandoned in a construction site with some other puppies. And so that was her start in this world. So she is a black lab pit mix. She looks like a ferocious beast and like you would not want to mess with her. But she is so timid. She's such a little baby because she knows fear you know? But Molly, she is like a spitting image of her, but a miniature version. She's got some dachshund in her, so she just looks like a, a, a miniature version of Lainey. Molly's about eight months old. Um, I don't think she's going to get much bigger than she is right now, but she has never been taught to be afraid of anything. So we're getting all the stuff ready for uh, this weekend. Our house is, if you saw Facebook pictures, it's like overloading, right? And we're also, mom, dad, and I, and um, some, yeah, we were cooking a whole bunch for all, you know, all these meals we cooked, and you know, that's, that's what you ate, so yeah. But it, it took a lot of time and a lot of noise, and Molly is so curious, she doesn't know that anything should be scary, so she's like all of like, yeah, I wanna try that, let's do this. And Lainey's like hiding in the bedroom, you know? And it's just so funny, because she, you know, she has no reason to be afraid anymore or to be shameful of anything, but yet, she still is exuding this. But she's loved, and she's come a long way, and she's doing really well, but she still is a little timid. But you know what I mean? It's, it's, there's no need anymore. She's safe. She also has, like, organic dog food and memory foam bed, so <laughs> she's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so let's go to Genesis 3. Okay, so in verse 7, we're going to talk about how, um, you know, this is after, this is post-sin, right? This is um, <laughs> after, after they've eaten the tree. So in verse 7, it says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now, I don't think God was confused about where they were, right? I mean, he knew, right? <laughs> but I'm going to hide about hiding figs, right? Fig leaves. And so... Isn't that, I don't know about you, but I bet that you can relate to this. When you've done something wrong or you're embarrassed of something, what do you want to do? You want to hide. That's like the instinct, right? And if you're hurt, my, okay, okay. And if you're hurt, um, maybe by another believer or a family member, don't you just want to isolate? Even from the people that hurt you, that, that love you the most? That's like what we do. Maybe we're afraid to face the truth or to deal with our feelings or we're just ashamed. 
To me, that is the definition of that. So we're gonna pivot a little bit over and it'll all kind of come together. Um, how many of you know the difference between conviction and condemnation? There's a very important difference, right? Because God convicts us, but God doesn't condemn us, right? God told Adam and Eve not to eat the fruit because he was trying to protect them. Not because they were going to mess up and he wanted to condemn them and make them feel bad about it. The serpent tricked Eve so that we, could, that we would have to lose spiritual life, right? And Jesus, I mean, that was the goal for him. He wanted to make that happen. But I think the most important part of what he did isn't the most obvious answer. He wanted her, he wanted them to hide from God, right? To separate themselves from God. Not just kill that connection, he wanted them to hide, okay? So, when you feel condemned, is that God? No, it's the devil. He's trying to get you to sow fig leaves and hide. When you go out in public, the more you do it, you're probably less and less ashamed or nervous about, oh, am I praying in front of people, you know, right? Those kinds of things. You still have that thought. I mean, I do. I'll do it, but I'm like, I don't need to make a big, huge display. You know, that's just where I'm at, right? Um, it's, in, it's in me still, but you can work through that. You can go through your feelings because those are just temporary things. So more importantly, though, God is God, right? I mean, we know that he can't lie and he can't remember a forgotten sin, but he's still God. I mean, at that point, it's not like we were like a chicken egg, you know, problem here. Like, he created Adam and Eve out of dust. Couldn't they have, he just said, okay, these are my only people. I'm just going to fix this, right? Couldn't he have just done that? I mean, am I the only one that asked that? Why, I mean, why have this elaborate plan? He could have just, right? Um, and of course, yeah, he wanted a family and all these wonderful things. He wanted us, and that's great. But also, when he said that the day you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you know, he said, thou shalt surely die. You're going to lose spiritual life. He didn't say anything about getting kicked out of the garden. He didn't. Now, I know that we needed a perfect man to fix what Adam messed up. I know that. But he could have just stuck with Adam and Eve, right? Not gone through all the trouble. He did that so the devil could never hold shame over us again. Christ bore that on the tree already. So like Sheila was having that, you know, that uh, familiar spirit come, come at her, and she was like, fuck you, devil. And he had to get away, right? It's because of that. He wanted that. He didn't want you to be bound and in bondage to this stuff, you know? So why are some of us are ashamed? Why are we ashamed? Why are some of us ashamed? We're, some of you are carrying something that happened to you years ago, maybe something that you just did recently, something completely out of your control possibly. You're still carrying that. He could have just fixed it with Adam and Eve if he really wanted to. I believe that. He didn't want us to carry that shame, and he never wanted to let the devil have that again. You know? Are you hiding from the Father? Maybe it's time to take a cue from Pilar and the prodigal son and get on your knees and have some humility. Because better is one day in my father's house than a thousand elsewhere. So, some of you that were here last, day, last year know this. Some of you might know this because I talked about it outside of here. 
One of the rules for this uh, lake property is you're not supposed to have dogs here. That's one of the rules, but I had a little dog named Fergie. He was a small chihuahua. He was an older guy. He's at our wedding. Um, I rescued him when I was still living in Maryland, and it was really cold single digits January of 2015. And... Uh, you know, he was older and, and he had not been taken care of. His teeth were starting to fall out the end of last year. And, um, you know, his pretty much full-blown cataracts. And so basically, I mean, he couldn't really do a lot, but he was pretty smart. He, like, navigated our house. He memorized it and everything like that. But I loved that dog. It was an ugly little thing, but I loved it, you know. <laughs> he was my dog. And uh, about 10 minutes before the, last, the advance last October started, we realized he had gotten out, and because he was blind, he got out, we were staying in this cabin, got out, and the weight of his body just pushed him down as he walked down this hill, and he ended up drowning in about half foot and a half, two feet of water right there. And I'm telling you this because there was no way in hell that I was going to not do this weekend because that was clearly not from God, you know? You know, I was going to stand strong on that. And, you know, if you have a dog or uh, even if you don't have an animal, you can see that that's very traumatic and obviously an attack, right? I mean, that's like, what the fuck? I mean, ser seriously, I'm sorry. I'm just, that's how it is here. So there you go. Um, um, so anyway, <laughs> I mean, as you can see, there's plenty of people that love to minister. Everyone and everyone ministered to that dog. You know, if it was going to get up, it was going to get up. But... And I believe that God can do that, and he's willing. It just wasn't what he did this time. It's not because I didn't believe hard enough, right? Um, but at the end of the time that we had, people still got set free. It didn't matter that that happened. It still was a kick-ass weekend. If you were there, you know. Um, but a believer said to me, you know, I get this you know, prophetic vision, right, that... I see a little girl holding a, a small stuffed animal really tightly, just like white knuckling it. And then I see Jesus holding this big teddy bear behind him, and she's just not letting go of it, but she doesn't see what's behind him, right? And uh, anyways, we get home after the event. My parents leave the next day. Justin gets up really early to go to work, so they, my parents help me bury the dog. And they left, they, you know, so I'm home by myself, and at that time I worked from home, so it was just, I really knew that he wasn't there, right? And um, so I'm in the shower. If, if you ever need to cry, the shower is a great place to cry, and no one will know. <laughs> and uh, I'm just in there, <laughs> just crying to God, and I'm like, I know it's not his fault, but it's just, I was mad, you know, I was just mad. And... Um, I said, you know, I know I need to get another dog, but I just don't have the strength to do it, God. You're going to have to do it for me. And I just need some comfort. I need encouragement. I'm just hurting. I'm hurting. This hurts so bad. And uh, he said, you know what? You told me you want to be on the front lines for me. I put you on the front lines, and sometimes the front line, people on the front lines get beat up a little bit. You just came out of a battle but your wounds will heal. What I did this past weekend, no devil in hell will ever be able to undo. Yeah. The very next day, my good friend Ashley, who had Lainey, she works a lot, goes to school. She didn't have enough time to, to really give that attention to the dog that the, the dog wanted and needed. But she, I mean, she loved Lainey. And then she had also lived with us for a little bit too, so we loved Lainey already. And she called and said, God told me to give you this dog. And Lainey at that time was just about a year old, and God said, you know what? Fergie was the last part of your old life. No more short-term relationships for you, you know? That is, that's what I got. And now I have two dogs. All right, Isaiah 61.
I gotta have the anointing on me. <laughs> um, all right, so verse three, and it says, this whole chapter is awesome, but I don't want to take the whole time to do this. Um, verse three says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be, be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So God will give you beauty for your ashes. You can't have both, though. <laughs> you can either have God's beauty or you can have your dead ashes, but you can't have both. I could have just said, fuck this. I'm never doing advance again. I'm never going to be in the line of sight of the devil because that just hurts so bad. And like, listen to the lies that he was telling me. Like, well, how are you going to run this weekend? this abundant life weekend that you're having, you can't even raise your dog up. Crap. Shame. But I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give this to you, God. And he gave me beauty for my ashes. Now, this is a dog. And I love that dog. But clearly, if that's the worst shit that ever happens to me in my life, I'm good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Think about what ashes you're carrying. Are you carrying a dead body? Are you carrying shame? It's hard to be bold when you're ashamed of something or you're holding something. Maybe someone did something to you. I don't know. You know what it is. Verse 7. Isaiah 61, 7. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. I'm going to read it in ESV too. Verse 7 in ESV it says, Instead of your shame there shall be a double portion, and instead of dishonor they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore in their land they shall possess a double portion, they shall have everlasting joy. God will give you double for your former shame, but you have to give it to him. You can't be bold and hold that stuff in. So it's really interesting that you were talking about Joseph earlier, Joshua. Um, Genesis 50. So... Um, I think there's some pins and some note cards someone can pass out to folks, or you can pass them around, whatever, just that. So what we're going to do, though, is I want to have you write down um, some things that you've been, you've been holding on to, maybe something that has been holding you back from walking out your authority. And it's going to be anonymous. No one but you and God will see it, so you can be really honest and just dig deep for it. Um, we're going to do some songs in a minute, and then uh, folks are going to lead you down to the fire pit, and you're going to make ashes out of that stuff, okay? So, uh, anyway, I'll read this. It's, it's awesome that you were talking about Joseph earlier, because this is his reaction to his uh, brothers after he got out of his situation, and his father was dead, so there was no one to kind of back them up anymore, and they're like, oh, well, Dad told us before, before you died that you should forgive us. And he said, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant, God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. As for you, devil, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. He brought good out of that situation, right? Because you know what he said about this advance last year to me when I was crying in the shower? He said, it's going to double, and it did. You meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it out about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Romans 8.28 says, my God works everything out for me. So God can use that pain, whatever that is, and work it out for good. He can make it a funny thing to tell a story about during a teaching, or it can you know, help someone that's going through something crappy, whatever. Come on up, ladies. Um, but the cool thing is, this time, I'm here, and I have no pain of that memory. Not at all, you know? God, God made beauty, you know, beauty for ashes, and uh, 
I'm not going to keep talking just to sound good. So these ladies are going to do some wonderful things while you guys are uh, writing down your notes. And then um, I think my husband will lead you outside and we'll do that. And then I have a little special beauty item to give you. Don't worry, guys. It's not makeup. I love you. How long is this gonna last? Then you look at this prisoner and you say to me, son, stop fighting a fight, it's already been won. Cause I am redeemed, you set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. Cause I'm not who I used to be. Oh, I am redeemed. Oh, my life, I have been called on a word. My shame and regret But then I hear you whisper Child, lift up your head I remember, oh God You're not done with me yet Cause I am redeemed And you set me free Shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. Cause I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. Oh, I don't have to be the old man. 